Hello everybody and welcome to our masterclass video editing narrative film editing. My name is Tom Stranat and I am the uh, lead digital artist of the Creator Space. And uh, again, welcome, thanks for joining us. This is a four week, uh, multi-week uh, course, multi-session. So make sure that you sign up for all four of them so that you can get the reminders through Eventbrite. So definitely check that out. Want to just thank all our partners in making this possible. So we have the Canada Council for the Arts. We have our library partners, the Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, and the Wasaga Beach Public Library. So uh, in terms of the editing software, Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve and the computers, we do have digital arts workstations that are available um, at, the, um, at these library, library partners. So Blue Mountains Public Library, the uh, Wasaga Beach Public Library, and so on. So definitely, um, you know, you can go and book times and check those uh, systems out. So if you, if you don't have a, uh, a fast connection uh, in terms of your hard drives or computer and so on at home, you can always check out uh, what's available through our library partners. So that's uh, a real fun um, uh, way to get into editing. So let's, uh, let's get right into this. So today's goal is we're going to look at importing footage and then doing an assembly edit and how that works. Uh, if you haven't, make sure you download the uh, footage that I sent out as a link. It's also in the online event page details. So you can check out the, um, the link there um, and you can download this footage that I'll actually be editing with. So that's really the fun part. Okay, so we're going to look at a few things. So we're going to define narrative film. We're going to have an overview of the nonlinear editing software, the Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve software. And then we'll have a look at starting a project, importing footage. Uh, adjusting the, the specs, uh, naming, or organizing footage, uh, and then, you know, editing and getting into a assembly edit. So that's uh, the cool part that we'll get to. And we'll have a bit of time for some Q&A after as well. Okay, so narrative film defined. What is it? Uh, so narrative film is fictional and storytelling based filmmaking. It can be based on a true story, but everything about it is non-factual since it's an artistic representation of the real events. So this is like most things we see, a lot of, uh, you know, TV series, um, you know, f fictional, um, non-factual uh, narrative filmmaking. So films you watch, so whether it's action films, uh, comedies, uh, you know, a, a crime series, anything like that. There's actors and, you know, essentially make-believe is what's uh, happening. Different genres, so there can be historical, western, horror, action, comedy, thriller. And then genres also bring up an interesting thing because... The genres can also have, you know, require more specific styles of editing. So, you know, while, uh, you know, general dramas might have more of artistic interpretations, there's also some expectations. So we expect certain things with horror films and, you know, when things happen and how things happen. So that's, that's kind of a fun part of, of that, um, uh, of that world of, uh, of, uh, film genres, right? So we'll, we'll get back to that as we proceed a bit more. Okay. So just a note on data management, and I welcome everyone, you can go back to our YouTube channel, tbmcs.ca, and you can check out uh, all of our uh, previous sessions, so lots of sessions on editing, all the basics of Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve software, how it works, and so on. And we just did one on importing, and data management was a big part of it, so I you know, encourage you to check back and look at that past session. But here's what's really important. So data management is really all about labeling your shots and footage with the project date, other info, is it you know A or B camera? So A camera being the main footage, B camera might be you know someone went and, and got some shots of establishing shots of a town or a house and things like that. So those are those A and B camera things. Then the other thing you wanna do is back up all your footage to at least two different locations. So that means usually copying it to your local drive or system where you're editing from and then some sort of a backup or external drive. So I always like to have, you know, a couple of uh, uh, drives handy. And, uh, you know, for example, um, you know, this kind of a, uh, a lacy type drive, um, this, this can uh, land and, and uh, you know, has a, a couple of meters, I think you can drop and it won't, it won't break. So, so, you know, this, this, kind of a, uh, this kind of a drive can be very useful. Um, so I put everything on the system and then I'm also putting everything on this drive as well and is backed up. So that way it exists twice. And I think that's always really important is to, you know, make sure you have backups because if it's shot digital, 
media is, it exists as long as it exists. Uh, there's no tape, there's no negative. So that, that is your original raw footage. So that footage needs to be protected and backed up. So data management is super, super, super key. So I wanted to stress that really important note. Okay, so let's move along from there. So Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve, uh, what is this? So it's, uh, it's what we use in the creator space and what we have on our digital arts computer stations. So it's a free nonlinear editing software. And that's the great thing that it is free. It's um, you know, the same kind of software that's used on most major Hollywood films in color grading. It's a little bit new in the entry in terms of being used for editing. It's, uh, it's kind of been building up that whole suite. So it's, it's just like Adobe Premiere, but in this case, it's free. Um, so it has you know, far superior color grading than something like Premiere, and the editing is comparable, and it has a whole audio suite as well. So it's all everything you need to do post-production and more. And uh, again, it is free, so you can download it. Again, if you have an older computer or it's not compatible, you can also look in their support and you can also download previous versions. So there might be, right now it's on version 17, so you might be able to go back to version 10 and that might work on your computer. So all is not lost and otherwise come and use one of our computers at the libraries. Okay, so importing footage. Uh, so let, let's start, uh, we're gonna do a demo, just you know, how do we import, how do we start a project? How do we import footage? And you know, how do we do that? So it's, it, a lot of it is, is really great because it's, um, uh, pretty intuitive and once you do it once you'll understand it and it's easy it's like riding a bike we'll keep getting used to it and be able to to redo it on and on so yeah let's 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 go into uh, into the project so what I'm gonna do is just uh, uh, I'm just gonna switch over into uh, resolve and so what you'll usually have is you're gonna have something like this. So let me just get over to the screen. Okay, so here's our screen. I've started up the software. So just double clicking uh, DaVinci Resolve. And here, what it's gonna do is show you a bunch of past projects. And that's the, the really uh, convenient way. So it opens this up, this is its home screen and it has the database with all the projects that have been worked on. And so what we're gonna do is create, I'm gonna go down here and go new project. Okay, and I'll just save the last one I was working on, so that's fine, save. Okay, and then, then it's gonna give me a cue of, you know, what, what do I wanna call this project? And so, you know, that might be, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, that's always a bit of a fun thing to figure out, okay, what, what do we wanna call it? And, um, you know, so I'll just go into here. So see right here has the, the project title, right? So I'm gonna just backspace on the keyboard and I'm gonna call it uh, this short that we're gonna be working towards uh, getting a scene done is called We Do Care. So we do Care, um, and I'm gonna call it um, Editing Master Class. So I know it's for this particular class. And then all you need to do is go to Create. I'm gonna hit Create, and voila, it opens it up. So you might ask, okay, well, now what? Because you just kind of have this blank canvas, and what do we do? So the first thing we're gonna do is get our media in there. So I'm gonna to go to the media tab and I'm gonna create, uh, over here under master, I'm gonna create new bin and I'm gonna call it um, uh, raw footage film shoot day one. So this, I'm just assuming, let's say there's a, you know, a few days of it. Now this whole square next to it here is uh, what is the bin? So bins traditionally uh, were based on the fact that there was a bin and then you'd have a bunch of your film and it would be hanging in the bin and you take it off the bin, the bin would roll around in the editing room. So that's where bins come from. It's very much like a folder, but they are called bins. So just when you're looking to figure out, okay, why is it called a bin? That's why they're a bin. Okay, so then from here, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go import media and I'm gonna find the, uh, the footage that uh, you guys, um, that we I emailed out and also it's available on the online event page so you can get right into it. So here it is, the We Do Care scene footage. And what I'm gonna do is click uh, on the top here and there's uh, I guess about 20 shots altogether. I'm gonna hit shift, 
click the bottom and that means I've selected them all. I'm going to hit open. Okay. And then what it's going to do is say, Hey, you know, your frame rate's different than what's expected. And that's great. We want it to match. We want the project to match the frame rate that we filmed in. So we're going to say change. So that's just the, the little window right over here. So change, right? So this is the project frame rate. Uh, don't change would keep it into its default, but we want it to change based on what we've filmed it. So we're going to hit change. And there we go. There's all our footage. So now uh, I'm going to just click over here and it's going to list it all. And it's going to go, it's going to go uh, like so. And by clicking here, I can sort it either, you know, from one to 20 or 20 reverse. So I'm going to start with a uh, clip one, double click it. And you see here, the slate uh, says 4A, and which is perfect. So that's, we want to always reference what it says right here, right? So it says 4A, take one, right? And that means it's scene 4A, take one. And this is going to relate back to uh, our script. So we'll get back to after. Now, I think the scene numbers might be a little bit off because it got reformed after, but that's okay. We'll figure out what it is. But the main thing is this is one big scene and that's what I thought it was great that we can put together this scene. So then we got to figure out what our shots are. So narr narrative editing usually comes down to how was the film shot and different types of shots. So there's something that's called the master shot and this will be usually the characters in, you know, full frame or like a medium shot waist up and the whole scene takes place and this master shot can be like the blueprint of what the scene is supposed to be. And that's what we can start with is just the master shot. And then we can put in other um, uh, elements after that. So we want to just look at what, what that's like. So uh, I'm going to just double click this. And now with the space bar, I can hit play. So you can hear it's you know kind of noisy and uh, I'm just gonna kind of scroll. Excuse me. Hi, I'm Barb. I, I sense you might be having a little bit of trouble with your computer. Okay, so that's we can hear we're playing it back and and that's uh that's our first uh, shot. So what we're gonna do is we want to the first step we did we import all the shots and what we want to do is label all of these. So it's gonna be four A take one. So instead of the saying A. 0082022730C001, which doesn't really tell us much about what uh, what the shot is. I'm going to just do uh, Command A, and then I'm going to backspace that. I'm going to go for A uh, hyphen one. So that tells me it's scene four, shot A. So that. The shots are usually A, B, C and the different types of shot setup. So the wide shot would be A, B would then be like the next kind of setup. So maybe a close up of the different actors. Uh, so one actor would be B, the other actor would be C, right? So we go A, B, C, D, so on. And um, so that's how we label it. So that's four A1. So we base it on that slate and we, we start labeling everything in that manner. So four A1. Then I'm gonna click on the next one. Um, and I think take two didn't exist, so I didn't even bother loading it. It was like a, uh, like five frames, then it got canceled. So the next one is 4A3. So I don't even need to watch anything yet. I'm just organizing all my footage. So 4A-3. I'm going to click on the next one. Move forward. Here's the, the slate. It's always there somewhere. 4A-4. take four. Next one. 4A take five. You can see it's, you know, it's not the, the most glamorous part of editing, but organization is key. 4A six. Okay, and here we go. You see we're getting into a close-up. So now it's 4B. 
So that's, that's really the important thing. So it's become 4B, take 1, instead of uh, 4A. So you can see it's a close-up, and that's different than the previous shot, which is the wide shot. So 4A, and now we go to 4B. So 4B, take 1. So we're going to go 4B, take 1. Right, so we've called it that. Uh, I'm going to click on the next one. This will probably be take 2. It looks like the, there is no slate. That's okay. That can happen. So we're going to go 4B, take 2. And this should be C, if everything's going well. And there we go. 4C, take 1. And you can see that's the other shot now. Right, so we had 4C, take 1. So 4C hyphen 1 is what I'm going to call this one. And you see the next one's 4C, take 2. This one is 4D, take 1. Uh, this will probably be, let's see, 4D, take 1. This will be 4D, take 2. Sometimes, again, the slates are missing here. Um, and here, let's just lower the volume there a little bit. So that's 2A, take 1. So it's a whole other scene. So you see now we're going to 2A, take 1. Right, so very different. So that 2A versus the previous ones that were C. So that's how we know we're at a different scene. This is this would be earlier in the script because it's scene two. So the script would be chronological. So scene one, two, three, four, and this way we know we're a little bit earlier in the script. So let's go to the next one. Two A take two. Two A take three. Two A take four. Two A take five. Perfect. So that is our first step: is getting importing all the footage, labeling all of it so that it matches what's on the slate. And again, we might it, we're gonna have to kind of uh, go back and forth on the script because I think the scene numbers that when I uh, populate the scene numbers they might be a little bit different. So we'll just kind of find out what the actual script scene number is um, and. What happens then is a big, big important thing now. So we've already called it. We do care editing masterclass as our project name. Really super important is to save as you go along. Um, so we've set up some auto saving on the computer. So generally they'll save every, I think it's about 15 minutes or so. But as you go, you're going to want to keep saving. Um, it's great to know that you've saved. And then, you know, if the power goes out or something happens on, on this desktop computer, it's uh, not going to be lost. So to save, I'm just going to hit Command S, and we've saved. Okay. So once again, so Command S. So you can see that little window just shows up quickly. It's saved and it's good to go. So you see on the bottom here, we have Media Cut Edit. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Edit, and this is where we're going to start to build our shots into a sequence. So in terms of the editing, again, so it comes down to the different individual shots. So in this case, you see we have. Uh, uh, 4A, B, C, D, right? So A, B, C, D, four different shot types to choose from and multiple takes. So the in editing, we want to then choose which shot do we stay on for different parts of the script, for how long, and how do we build drama? So we can build drama by either deciding to uh, have a different rhythm in terms of cutting between the shots and longer, shorter can change the rhythm. We can also use uh, different uh, reaction shots, so we can get into the characters reacting to each other talking, and that tends to have a, a bit of a more of an emotional impact. It can help with, um, you know, showing what the other character's thinking without going into some sort of, an, you know, internal monologue, so we can actually see what they're thinking with their face and eyes. And um, so that's it. So we have that ability to do some pacing. We have the ability to decide which angle we show at different times and so on. So the general rule of thumb is to start with this master or wider shot and then to move into close-ups. The reason we do that is 
again, this is kind of the first approach. So our goal again today is to create this assembly edit, just putting it, the scene together roughly, is that by showing where we are spatially, we're establishing what's happening, what location we're at, and, and so on. So if I show the wide shot, we get an idea that we're in a library because there's books and stacks and so on behind it, it's in a library. If I went into the close-up of a character, um, like right now, even my shot, um, where, you know, this is in my editing suite, but, you know, you don't really get a sense of what's here, right? Because we're pretty close up. But if I go into a wide shot, you'd see everything around me a bit differently. So it's that choice of, you know, what do you show an audience? So you can also start with a close-up eventually and then reveal the wide. So that's another way. But we're going to start with the the you know, kind of the common uh, startup way of doing it, which would be the master shot and then moving into close-ups. And that's what our goal is today, is to get that scene assembly done. So I'm just going to flip over here to, um, I just want to find the script that I have here. Um, let me open that up. Okay, great. Okay, so I'm just looking at the script here, so let me just cut over to it. So this is the, this is the script, and I think what's happened is it's populated itself. It, uh, scene four is actually scene nine. Um, I just added this, this um, scene numbers when I was uh, exporting out. So just so we have that reference, I think there's a few more scenes here that were um, uh, you know, kind of populate themselves in this final draft of, uh, of the script. So we're, scene four is technically scene nine. So apologies for a little bit of the, the difference there, but um, it just so we know. So interior library, computer workstation area. Um, again, it's not a big deal, uh, but we just so we know what we're, what we're all going to be looking at. Um, so, and that's, that can happen. That's actually, you know, a, a great uh, thing to think about is, you know, sometimes this, the script scene numbers might be different than what you have on the slate, uh, vice versa. That could be different draft or different, you know, logging things. So we need to identify where we're at. So we know that the two characters are sitting at the computer. Here's a bunch of their dialogue, and that's what happens in what we just organized. So I know that it's definitely scene nine versus there's no dialogue in the scenes before. So it kind of helps uh, figure out where we're at. Okay, so by looking at this script, uh, this is the next step. So I like to always bring in all the footage. Then I like to sit down, read the script. And by reading the script and figuring out what the scene's about, I get a sense of, okay, how is it written? And then I'll look at how is it shot? And how can I start to achieve what the director decided in shooting it? And what helps tell the story in the best manner? Big decisions to be made. But again, we start in steps. So step one is what's called the assembly edit. Very rough. Sometimes I'll just put the master shot just the one wide shot, just to play it through. Especially, if, you know, let's say it's a longer film, I'll just put those wide shots stacked together so I can just kind of watch it through without too much editing. And it really gives me the essence of what's happening in the scene, what the actors are doing, and so on, before I start deciding where to take the audience. And this is the real exciting part of editing, is that you get to decide what the audience is seeing and technically where they are at any given time. So as an editor, you decide that the audience will be far away. They'll come in close to see something or a detail. Could be a very extreme close up, an insert of you know, touching a keyboard, hitting delete. And that gives us maybe a clue. And, you know, that, and that's really the, cute, the cool thing is that you have that total control as an editor. And that's the it's a big responsibility at the same time so this is what we want to do is make sure we're well versed in what the scene is before we just go in and tackle it so here it is so we just look at this jeffrey sits back on the chair at the computer looks at the screen he sees uh, all the uh, search results but he doesn't quite remember what he's doing after staring at the screen for a bit he remembers what he was up to and starts to click on a few search results to learn barb curious about who he is leans over to introduce herself and then we've got the character's name, Barb. We have her dialogue. Excuse me, hi, I'm Barb. I sense you might be having a little trouble with the computer. I just want to let you know I'm here to help if you need it. 
Jeffrey, oh, that's very kind. Yes, you can tell I'm struggling a bit. I'm a little noisy over here, aren't I? By the way, I'm Jeffrey Lincoln. So we're getting a, you know, the back and forth between the two characters, introducing one another. So right away, I'm thinking, okay, well, that's going to be important to introduce, you know, to, to, to see them once they start introducing uh, each other and talking about who they are. Barb, nice to meet you. Oh, don't worry, don't bother me. I must say you look quite familiar. Did you teach creative writing at U of T? And you've written several best-selling fiction novels. Yes, I taught for 20 plus years at U of T. I retired just a few years ago. So, you know, a whole kind of this small talk, fan, Barb talking to this author. And then we have Barb. Wow, my younger sister Diane was one of your students and she used to tell me stories about how amazing a professor you were. I bet you are the main reason she stuck with the program. She's not a quitter anymore, thanks to you. In fact, she published her first fiction novel and it made the New York Times bestseller list. I can't wait to tell her that I bumped into you. A beat? So that's just a bit of a pause. I thought your face was familiar because I recall seeing you at her graduation. Taking a breath. Enough of my gushing. I should leave you now. Again, nice to meet you. So you can see just by that whole chunk of big dialogue, uh, you can see that right away I'm thinking, hey, she's controlling the conversation in the script, but I would definitely be hungry to see Jeff's or Jeffrey's reactions to her going on and on and on and being kind of flattering him and so on. So I'm, I'm going to be expecting to see some of those reactions right away. I'm like, okay, that's what I want to see. In reading this, I'm trying to figure out what would I want to see visually. Uh, so definitely would want to see some of uh, Jeff's, uh, Jeffrey's uh, reactions there. Both Barb and Jeffrey focus back on their computer screens. A few minutes pass by. Jeffrey packs up and gets up, or, up from his computer to leave. Well, it was nice meeting you, Bev. Have a nice evening. Cheers. So here, this is important. I see this right away. Okay, well, he's calling her Bev. But her name is Barb. So there's obviously that's an, an important plot point that... You know, that's, he's mistaking her and calling her something totally wrong. So he's talked to Barb for, you know, a whole couple minutes here. And he just goes, see you later, Bev. So there's obviously something wrong with his memory or talking to her. So that's, that's going to be key, really key. I see that right away as an important moment of that scene. And that's what the, the great thing is, is to really look at when we're studying a scene to figure out what is going to be the most, you know, what is kind of a key important moment of the scene so just like a film has a beginning middle end you think of each scene in that way too and we're building to some sort of point that the scene has if big question is sometimes you know if a scene doesn't really end up having any kind of point that those are sometimes the scenes we might end up getting rid of as editors because they're not really driving anything forward or, or they're not important but you can see this one definitely has an important point in showing that he can't remember her name so that's a really key point in reading the script and figuring out what, how we're going to put it together. Jeffrey proceeds to walk out of the library. Barb, concerned based on how she's observed him wandering like a lost soul, decides to get up and fall a little behind to see that he gets on his way safely. Uh, and then we're in the check-in. Wow, I better go help him. Jeff is uh, walking him to the, to the check-in area. And I think that's why that other scene too, again, it got a little bit uh, labeled differently, uh, can be used as scene 10. So, you know, we just want to match what's there. Um, again, really important, stuff doesn't always come out exactly how, uh, how it was uh, planned or shot in the organization. So we label it by the slate, then we might sometimes have to identify it. What is it, where is it really in the script? So um, that's kind of the script as a blueprint. And, um, you know, just like, you know, think of any kind of construction, uh, if you're doing something, uh, you know, blueprints get adjusted and there's modifications uh, continually, uh, even on a house, a skyscraper, office buildings, right? So same idea, things are getting changed and adjusted um, and there might be some, you know, up-to-date things. And then essentially once the building is being built, there might be big changes where there's, you know, a big window where there wasn't supposed to be a window and that was a last minute change and that's just how a production happens. There can be all of a sudden, you know, a scene is cut out or a scene is extended or it's uh, combined with another scene and it becomes scene five becomes scene five and scene eight combined. And, um, you know, that's, those are those little fun things that you'll get into as we're, as we're editing through this. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go back to our uh, Resolve editing software. And so now we have, we have all these shots here. You can see the, the clip names right there. And then this down here is where our sequence is going to go. So we have our viewer right up here. So if I click 
uh, for a one. I double click it and I'm going to get the, the shot right here. Okay, so that's, we can see our footage there uh, for a one and that's great. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to create another bin and this one I like to call cuts. And this is where we're going to put all our sequences. So we have our raw footage in this bin. You can see when I click on it, all the raw footage shows up. When I click here, we get to the cuts. And here I'm going to then right click um, and I'm going to go create new timeline, which is also command N. And I'm going to call this, we do care assembly edit one. Okay. And I'm going to create that. And now you can see I have these, these uh, windows down here. Let me just pan this down, put this down here. So I got these nice uh, windows down here happening. And um, so this is uh, video one, audio one. And that's where the clips are going to then slowly line themselves up in along that sequence. So what I'll do in the assembly is we're going to, um, let's, so the, the big next step really, and just in the interest of time, I'm not going to do it, but um, as editors, you want to watch through every single take. So, you know, if they're three minutes times six, that's 20 minutes, but then our session would be done. So I'm just going to take, uh, you know, the last take and just you know assemble with that and just say hey that's the one i like the most uh, might not be the case but um I'll, I'll i'm going to review them all as before we get into next week when we get into the rough cut but um, that's what we want to do next is to watch through all the footage and find out which takes you like there might be one or two takes as an editor uh, if you're not the director there's a director that you're working with you then also want to watch it with the director find out what their favorite takes are You'll have your favorite takes, the director will have their favorite takes, and sometimes you can take pieces from the two takes if there's different. Sometimes you might both agree that take five is the best take, and that's what you're going to agree on using. So that's a really great uh, part of the process, is having that discussion as well. Okay, so I'm going to take, let's take take six. Okay. So usually I'll just go right after the slate. And there might be an action. Action. So this is going to be the whole scene. And you can see there's a little light at the end, so I'll just kind of go where it's usable. Okay, so I did an I for right where after the action. So that's always uh, our in and out points of what we want to uh, press. Right, so we'll have essentially right here. So there's an I and O, so in out on the keyboard. And now we'll decide where our start point is and our end point is for the actual shot. Right, so um, I've done that. So I have my in and I'm gonna hit O for the in and out point. And this is deciding where the shot's gonna be in the sequence. Okay, so I have my shot ready. So I can do a few things here. And like we've, what we've uh, talked about in our past uh, editing workshops uh, is that we can do a overwrite or insert clip so we like to practice what's called three-point editing. So we have an in and an out point in our clip, and then we have an in point in our actual sequence. So that uh, the timeline is uh, is the actual sequence. So that's just this part right here. So this area right here, this is the timeline. So right now, this is our in point there. We have the in point of the shot here. It goes to the end there. So this represents the entire take. So an in and out, and in the assembly, that's what I want to do. I just want to take that master shot, take the whole thing, put it into the sequence. So then I'm going to hit the uh, this overwrite, and you can see what it's done is it's dropped it right down. So it's taken it from up here, put it into the sequence. Nothing is destructive. I still have that whole full original take, 
if I want to go back to it, but now I have this initial assembly edit. <coughs> this is also going to start to tell me how long it is. So right now I go to the end here and it goes to 252. So my whole scene is about two minutes and 52 seconds. So that's great because that gives me a good understanding of, you know, what my final scene will be. So that's what can be, you know, taken as one assembly. What we'll do now is we'll put in a couple of the close-ups just to get a, a flavor of, of how this can work. So I'm just going to go forward here a little bit until our, our characters talk. Excuse me. Okay, so I'll go up to there. Excuse me. And now what I'm going to do is go over to our B tape here. So you see how she says, excuse me? Excuse me. Okay, so we have that in the Y. So I'm going to just have my endpoint right after that. So excuse me, I found it in her close-up. So I'll have her say, excuse me, in the close-up. Now I'll hit I for the in there. Hi, I'm Barb. I sense you're having a little bit of trouble with your computer. If you need a hand, just let me know. I'm here to help. Okay, then we'll go with out there. Okay, so again, I have my in and out. I've created my in and out. And here is my in where this marker is. So those are our three points for the edit. And now what I want to do is I'm going to overwrite. I don't want to splice and push it down. I want to go right on top of that master shot. So we have the two options. So we have the insert clip or we have the overwrite. So I'm going to hit overwrite. It goes right on top. So again, let's look at the difference. If I hit insert, it's going to push, push the shot open and then it's going to have repetitive words. So she's going to say, excuse me, are, are you da 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 da? And then it, she's going to say it all over again in the wide. But we want to go right on top of it. So Command Z to undo. And I'm going to overwrite there. Now let's play this back. Excuse me. Hi, I'm Barb. I sense you're having a little bit of trouble with your computer. If you need a hand, just let me know. I'm here to help. Problems, just ask me. I'll be happy to help. Okay, so now you can see um, this is okay. We can have a little bit of that overlap, and it doesn't have to be perfect. We're not getting to perfection yet. We just want to see how does that work. But you can see I'm already liking that, how it goes from this wide shot to her close-up. Oh, gee. Excuse me. Hi, I'm Barb. I sense you're having a little bit of trouble with your computer. If you need a hand, just let me know. I'm here to help. Problems, just ask. Okay, and now what I'll do is let's have a look at his close-up. Since you're having a little bit of difficulty with your computer, if you need a hand, just please let me know. I'll be glad to help. Okay, so I'm just going to want Jay to play backwards. Help. So she finished saying help. I'm here to help. So that's where I have my line on the sequence right now, right? So this is I'm here to help. And that's what that spot is. And here in this shot, she also says I'm here to help. And that's going to be my end point there. So I'm going to hit I. Okay, again, let's back it up with J. Why? Well, now we be glad to help. Be glad to help. Why? Well, to help. Okay, so I'm just hitting spacebar to play, start, stop, as we do in here. Uh, I, now I'm going to play it forward. Oh, thank you. As you can tell, I'm, I am struggling a little bit here. And making a little bit of noise, aren't I? Right, so that's great. Let's go up to there. Right, again, we're just trying this out. Quick assembly of the scene. So again, we have our in point, out point. And here is our endpoint on the sequence there. Same thing, I don't want to insert, I'm going to overwrite, so I just bring it right over there. So we're going to use that, overwrite clip. It's also F10 is the quick command. 
and it's right there, the one right after. And that's all we need to do. The other thing we can do too, and again, there's always, you know, probably a hundred ways to edit, is we can take uh, this shot, we can also drag it down and put it where we want it, like that. So that's the same thing, right? We can drag it with the mouse. Some people like doing that, is just dragging it down. Uh, I like doing the three point edit. And it's a good way to practice because then you can get a little bit faster with the keyboard than dragging things with the mouse. Let's watch it back now. Oh, gee. Excuse me. Hi, I'm Barb. I sense you're having a little bit of trouble with. Well, let's start that again. I was just on the wrong camera angle. Excuse me. Hi, I'm Barb. I sense you're having a little bit of trouble with your computer. If you need a hand, just let me know. I'm here to help. Oh, thank you. As you can tell, I'm, I am struggling a little bit here. And making a little bit of noise, aren't I? <laughs> Causing quite a bit of noise, aren't I? Okay. So now we have a little bit of that overlap there. So what I'm going to do here is just take this click there, I'm going to just drag it over to the red marker, right? Now you can see there's a bit of the black space. I'm going to click on this and just click it over there. And now we've just gotten rid of that excess. And making a little bit of noise, aren't I? Uh, yeah, yes, I am. Uh, it's causing quite a bit of noise, aren't I? <laughs> oh, I'm Jeff. I'm Chef. Oh. So there's uh, just the actor <laughs> get forget the next line of this big long kind of dialogue sequence. So we're gonna just oh, go right into thank that. Thank you. As you can tell, I'm I am struggling a little bit here and making a little bit of noise, aren't I? Oh, I'm Jeff. I'm, my name's Jeffrey Lincoln. Nice to meet you. And don't worry, you're no bother at all. Um, your name. Sounds really familiar, though. Didn't you used to teach a creative writing class at U of T? And you've written several fiction novels? Oh, yes. Oh, thank you for your kind words. Yes, I, I taught at U of T for 25 plus years. Oh, I've been retired for a few years now. Ah, I have great memories of those years. Okay, so we'll go up to there. Let's go back into uh, some close-ups just to get a sense of how this is going to come together. So now we're going to go in from her wow. Wow. My sister Diane took one of your classes. She used to tell the most amazing stories about her professor and the things he taught her. You know... If it wasn't for you, she wouldn't have gone on with the program. Because of you, she's no quitter today. I can't wait to tell her I actually met you. <laughs> Enough of my gushing. Please go on with what you were doing. Nice to meet you, though. Yes, likewise. Okay, so we'll go all of that. So again, I have our three points. I've made my in, out, and I have my in point ready on the sequence of where I stopped it, where he, she finished talking, or he finished talking, it's going to go right back to her close-up. Now I'm going to do that overwrite, right there, and let's see how that fits in. Wow, I have great memories of those years. Wow, my sister Diane took one of your classes. That's nice. To meet you, though. Yes, likewise. <laughs> and say hi to Diane. <laughs> Okay. It's been so nice to meet you, Bev. Have a great evening. Cheers. Okay. So that, there's our rough assembly. Um, so that's, uh, you know, we put in the close-up here. And again, here's where I'm going to want to put in some close-ups of Jeffrey. But I just get a sense of, okay, so I got a couple of close-ups. I got the wide shot. This is the very rough first assembly. And that's what you want to do is just put the master shot in. Experiment a little bit with some of the close-ups just to see how that's going to time out, how it's going to look. And you can see we're already matching it in pretty nicely. 
um, and we got a good idea of uh, of the scene so far. So um, let's just put in um, uh, one more uh, shot in here as um, she's, here. As she's talking to him. Let's just see how that looks. And how he was the main reason she never quit the program. Okay. If it wasn't for you. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click here. I'm going to add a track. And now we're going to just put this shot in. And I'm getting a little bit further ahead here, but we're going to turn off the audio. I got my uh, markers right here. And we're going to just use Jeff's as a um, insert of just the, the reaction shot. So I like to just kind of see how that's going to work. Her, you know, if it wasn't for you, she wouldn't have gone on with the program. Because of you, she's no quitter today. Right? So that allowed us to just see how can, can will those inserts work? And it's like, yeah, okay, I already can see it can work. It's going to need some fine tuning. That works really well. So I'm, I'm already excited with that uh, assembly so far. And that's it. So basically, we've, we've put together our whole uh, sequence here. Okay. Okay. Cheers. Listen, it's been so nice to meet you, Beth. You should even meet you, Beth. You should meet you, Beth. So I'm just going to make the uh, an in right there. So Bev, and I'm going to want to get to his close-up where he says, Nice to meet you. And I really want to get that close-up accent of Bev where he's saying her wrong name. Bev? 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 We you have a great evening. Cheers. Okay, so we got our in and out. And we're going to mark that in there. Okay, I'm just going to put it back here. Video one, audio one, over right there. Let's see what that looks like now. Well, listen, it's, it's been so nice to meet you, Bev. Well, you have a great evening. Cheers. Right, and that's a really nice way. I like to do that. It's like, that's, that's such an important part where Barb is called Bev. So by sticking in that close-up, he's like, nice to meet you, Bev, is the close-up. I know that's what I'm definitely going to want to have is that kind of a, a reaction of, uh, or that his statement to be really on his close up. And then I'll probably want to see her reactions and so on. But you can see it's, you know, it's starting to, to work. So this is what I would just call the, you know, the first assembly cut. Um, and, you know, we've achieved it. It doesn't take too long. Really, that master shot is, is it can be as simple as that. I like to just put in a couple close ups just to see how that's going to flow, if the angles are working. And it's a bit of a test to drive, right? Just to see, is this scene gonna work? Uh, you might have notes right away and say, you know what, this one close-up is out of focus, or it, it, you know, it just doesn't cut. It's the wrong angle or something's off with it. The character's wearing a different top. Stuff can happen. So by auditioning all the shots and angles we have, you get a good idea of, okay, everything's usable, and there's potential here to use it, and, and it's just gonna get better and better from there. That's where we want to get to was our first uh, assembly edit. So that's uh, really fantastic. I'm uh, happy with that. And then again, we want to just go Command S and we're saved. And there's a little edited thing out there and it disappears once you, once you save uh, the sequence. Okay, so perfect. So we have our script and you can see right here, nice to meet you. And we've gone through that whole, you know, page and a half. And, you know, roughly the assembly will take you maybe 20 minutes or something for about a page uh, as you go through and watching the footage. So um, that's definitely the, the next steps of what we want to, uh, you know, be able to do is, um, uh, so we've organized the footage, script to footage. And here's something that can happen too. Sometimes you'll get this line script that will actually have the script shown as a, um, you know, the different C numbers. You can say 20, you can see it says 24A, 24B, 24C, and it lines it in terms of where, how long each shot takes place during the script. So that might be something that um, either it was done for you or you can do it in the, in the editing process as well, is to line that script and, uh, you know, make that work. Okay, so again, so the goal of the assembly edit is to get a very rough idea of, of showing what the length of the scene is. Does it, will everything work? And I can assess that, you know, where we are. Um, you know, it's been ready to work and, and it is working and I'm quite pleased with that so far. So let's uh, move into a, a Q&A here now. Uh, we just got a little bit of... Um... Okay. 
yeah, let's go right in here. I'm going to just start up the Q&A. So i got a couple questions so far. Um, yeah, edit out markers. They do show up right in the the sequence. Um, and here, let me start this Q&A. And there is a... I didn't put her reaction of being called the wrong name. That's something I'm going to leave for our, when we get into like our next cut, the rough cut. I just wanted to get his reaction and make sure that's working and uh, you know kind of go from there and see see how that works um, but yeah um, so let's uh, let's just have a look back here again so I'm just gonna escape through here and uh, in terms of what that looks like so if I'm creating in and out points they're right up here so if I go in you see it's right up here in the in the um in the shots so going right here to this shot for b2 and that's uh there is the in point right here and the out point right there so that little gray thing is the in and out showing you the part that will then go into the shot okay and um and then in terms of you know how does that come together uh I didn't put her reaction, so she's being called the wrong name, and that's something we're going to work on in the rough cut, for sure. Let's see if there's any other questions. Yeah, so those a lot of those reactions, again, I jumped ahead a little bit. I just wanted to see how it's going to work with him saying the stuff, and wanted to show you guys a bit of the um, the reactions uh, shots there. Um, and how, that's going to be our, a real big goal for the next session, is getting reaction shots and fine-tuning everything. And playing with that because different reactions can do different things we can you know something to think about we can actually take you know reactions from different spots and you know reuse them differently so that uh, we can create kind of new uh, dramatic moments and new concepts and in, in how um, how we want to uh, you know present things so that could be um, uh, you know a really cool uh, factor as well so um, yeah that's perfect so if if you guys uh, if anybody has any questions uh, beyond this, let's make sure we can uh, keep the conversation going. Um, I would uh, want to make sure everyone can download that footage. Um, okay, so here's yeah one more question here. Let me just get into that. So how do we mark them um, uh, without the um, without the keyboard. So I would just, I mean, I, I just like using the keyboard process. Um, but uh, here, let me just show you guys. So here, if you can also use these tabs right here, there's a mark in and a mark out right on top here. They're just right over here. So th this is the mark in like that. And you can do a mark out like so. So th those can be used instead of an I and an O. But again, I like using the keyboard if you can. I, I find it makes it a little bit easier to, you know, to work and uh, and so on. So yeah, great question. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, why does it show this time code? Uh, there's a that's a good question. Um, okay, so it's uh, so what uh, Resolve does is it's um, it's creating essentially it starts at one hour and that's usually what like uh like kind of the broadcast uh you you know i like to always edit like that too is it's a one hour so zero one in the time code and so it's one hour and then everything goes to minutes seconds and frames so in this case it's a 24 frame uh sequence and uh so that's that's what those time code areas mean so this is one hour and then the minutes so as, as we progress, you can see it goes to one minute, two seconds, 10 frames. That's where we are right now. So that's what that represents. So the first hour, it's not one hour long, it's just that's the start point. So that's uh, traditionally the program start at one hour for uh, like broadcast hours and so on. Some editing software will start at zero, zero. Um, this one uh, defaults at, at uh, uh, zero, one. Um, and in creating the sequence, if you don't like that, when you're creating a new timeline, you can say what your start time code is right here. So instead of 01, I can say 00, 
and then you wouldn't have that. But I like that one hour mark because I know that's kind of where my show start is for the edit sequence. And that means pre one hour could be stuff like titles, uh, color bars and all that kind of stuff for, um, you know, for screening purposes. So the one hour is a, a great way to, to work. And it's, a, it's a good way to, you know, kind of a, a best practice, I would say. Um, yeah, so project settings in this case, uh, I just did the import. Um, in terms of what do the project settings look like, we can go right over here to file project settings. Uh, it's, it, it loads everything once I import it. So it made it 1920 by 1080. It's a 23.976 frame rate. Um, and then the video monitoring. So it does it all based on the footage that I imported. And that's why it asked me, hey, do you want to change it? I say yes. And that's it. It's that simple with uh, Resolve. You don't have to, you know, fuss around with, uh, you know, what it, what it is and so on. Um, once you've shot it, it will identify. Unless you have mixed uh, formats. And then you have to, you might need to preset it. But that's where you would do under File, Project Settings. That's where you can find that information. Um, perfect. Okay. So... Um, yeah, I think that's, that's perfect, everyone. Thanks again for joining us. Make sure that uh, uh, you can sign up uh, again for weeks two, three, and four, um, and you'll get the reminders. And if you haven't yet, please do download this footage, and then you can start practicing with that scene and do an assembly edit. So that's what I want everyone to do is take the footage, read over the script, watch all the shots, import them, organize them, and create an assembly edit. So that is your task. And then from the assembly edit, we're going to look at creating our first rough cut. And that's where we're going to start to look at pacing, timing, reactions, different takes. Maybe there's different takes where, you know, one area is, uh, you know, there's a line that got messed up. So we'll use different takes. And that's where it gets really exciting. So that's, that's coming up for next week. Okay. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us. I uh, want to thank all of our... Uh, Partners in this project, Canon Council for the Arts, our library partners, Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, and the Wasaga Beach Public Library. Thanks again for joining us, and I will see you next week.